Second time today. OBS is eating my mic settings. I'm getting pretty sick of it, but whatever. We're back. All right. How's it going, everybody? Thank you all so much for staying up late with us this week. I am Elrock617, and it was pretty surreal watching Bart's Nightmare be run by a different runner. I ran that game in so many marathons, so props again to Tetsuo for taking that game as far as he has along with the other runners. Telio, Jangle Storm, Pile. So for this week, to fault, continue our Short Simpsons block, this is a game that a lot of people are probably very familiar with. A lot of people probably saw it at their own arcades. I've been running this game for like over four years now. It's been a long time. But it's always a good one to bring back out for, for marathon time. Simply because I play every character to pretty much the same efficiency. And it's just, it, it, not only is it a sweet game, it's it's really fun to build, just have, let people be able to pick their own favorite characters because I honestly don't mind whichever character I play. I just play them all. And last I checked on our tracker, it looks as though Bart beat out Lisa in a fairly commanding lead. So that's who we'll be playing today. So we go ahead and pop my quarter in. I'm gonna go ahead and choose El Barto at three, two, one, go. Bart. So I won't be talking so much about specifically what Bart can do in this game, so much as about just the general gameplay technique. At least I'll be doing my best. First thing to note, this is the Japanese version of the game, and even though I have 1cc the US version, this is the only version that I speedrun. There's a lot more that you can actually do in this version of the game to me, that to me makes it a lot more fun. Clear all that out. Did not want that to happen, but okay. Uh, what are you doing? Dude. My friends are watching. Quit doing that. Gonna be seeing a lot of the jump attack here. Kills most enemies in one hit. So this here is actually something that's exclusive to international versions of the game. For those of you who played this game in the United States, you would not have seen this broom pop out of that tree. Actually pretty significant. So Because for this boss, we're gonna be able to do something like... Oh, okay, now he's just acting ridiculous. That was unfortunate. Again. And down. By comparison for the US version of that game, you basically have to bait out every single attack he does, and you get like one jump attack, and it takes between 12 to 15 of them. With the broom, you just get to do the same kind of damage to him with one fell swoop. Hmm. I'm kind of seeing that. Appreciate the heads up. Okay. Alright, so I'll do my best to talk through what we're getting here. Stage two. This is the stage that sort of introduces us to the rest of the game. First stage is really short. Pretty much just a tutorial. Snags and has a little helper here. Toss him that way. Whoa. Come here. Dudes are acting ridiculous right now. Grab the hammer. As I mentioned in the previous stage, there we got the broom. Here we get the hammer, which is also in the US version of this game, but there's a pretty significant difference, and that's that we get access to this really busted dive attack that just mows its way through enemies. And to beat them up, this is a very good thing to have. You just get to tear through them. As you can see here, it does require some degree of accuracy to make sure you're taking them out as efficiently as possible. And the enemies in this game are kind of, kind of wormy. They tend to slither around a lot. Weird hitboxes and the like. Uh, a little bit early there. This guy here I had to hit off screen. You can't dive into them if they're like any in any way off screen because you'll miss and then they get to hit you. And those hammers in that particular case do a lot of damage. So let's not do that. Let's like this guy. Okay. So the crusty balloon. This is actually the easiest boss in the game. I say as I get hit. Damage doesn't really matter here though. Wow, he's tracking me down, isn't he? <laughs> Never seen him zero in on me like that before. That was nuts. Still a short fight. Only takes eight hits, and he's out the window. Or through the floor, in this case. Mash so I can skip. 
on to stage three. This is low key, I think, one of the hardest stages in the game. A lot of things that go in its favor. First thing is the fact that the space in which you have to fight enemies is actually pretty small. Like, top to bottom. In the previous stages, you know, we had all the room in the world to be able to just frolic and do what we needed to do to make sure we were going to be able to gain space. That, or learn, like, the ins and outs of that. Thankfully, by this segment, we get the busted slingshot. Which, unlike the US version of this game, takes down any enemy in one hit. Conversely, US zombies take three hits. Here they only take one. Much faster. Oh. Oh, I there we go. Take this. We got some safety health for that hit I took. There's a cute little cutscene with a ghost showing up. Okay, so this has actually become a bit of a standard for Konami beat-em-ups around this time. And I don't mean the fact that it's an elevator. Like, yeah, there's lots of elevators for sure. Or this is It's a meme for a reason. However, <clears throat> in this one in particular, we're just going to do a time scan. The elevator has a very specific duration to it. So what I'm going to do is do my best to ensure that I don't get hit right before we reach the bottom. That one hit I took didn't really mean anything. I've got so much health that it's not really going to matter. Usually use an audio cue for this, which means right about now I'm going to be doing this. And then no more enemies. If you decide to just take out enemies willy-nilly, you're going to have a lot to deal with. They just keep spawning and things get really random. You don't want that. So this boss was a quick kill, and I'm going to try and pull it off. That's unfortunate. That guy doesn't normally get that to get out. Might be able to save it though. Okay. So despite getting hit out of it, I still managed to save that. That was nice. Basically, essentially what happened there is it's supposed to just go that way and all in one fell swoop. But I was a little late on hits on one of those guys. I actually wanted to hit that for speed purposes, not pick it up. This hammer, I actually remember I found in a, uh, it was like a YouTube video that was just showcasing the game. I think it was discussing regional differences. And I did not know this hammer existed above that door. So shout out to that video that I saw back in like 2018 or whatever it was. The realist MVP. That was unfortunate. Actually, I did make this stage quite a bit faster. You get the hammer before you get the broom. You basically get this busted weapon for, for just longer through the stage and just tear through it like butter. Get out of here. Kill that guy. Okay, kill that guy. I'm just gonna let him follow me. He's being a nuisance, and this guy's gonna take as long as it takes to spawn no matter what. Uh, that was unfortunate. Did not want to miss him. Okay, so for this guy, he only takes 10 hits. We, the best For the best way to take him out, what you want to do is line up behind him and then do a short hop into a swing to knock him down and loop him again. Pretty simple fight once you land the first hit. Okay, so take us on to stage five, which actually in my opinion is the hardest stage in the game. Stage 3 starts the wave of nonsense, but Stage 5 has law, all kinds of madness going against it. I'm also going to be picking up some food I don't normally get here because, you know, we got to feed the kids. For those that care about that sort of thing, normally when I submit this game for donation incentive for character picks, I, ch I include all four characters, but we're feeding the kids, so I wanted to make sure other bar Lisa got their time. I'll lift this rock. Did not actually know you could do that until like a little bit earlier this year. I think it was Lord BBH I saw run this game on his stream and he did that and I was like, oh, neat. I uh, really didn't want that to happen, but okay. Uh, quit acting up. Okay, there's some corn there I was trying to get, but it was kind of being a pain and trying to and spawning. One thing I will show off for this stage that is Bard exclusive, there is a speed strat in this stage that doesn't work for any character except Bard. 
showing off here in just a moment. We're going to maintain the slingshot. I'm going to move back a little bit. Throw the slingshot, and that spawns the broom. For any other character that throws the slingshot there, that broom will not spawn. They have to throw the slingshot and then hit the area where the bear cub is in order to be able to get it to spawn. Whereas Bart can just toss it there. So he's the optimal speed character for exactly that strat. He does suffer in some areas in the rest of the game, but it's still cool that he has that going for him. Not sure why he can and not Lisa. It's gotta be a um, gotta be a hitbox issue, like in terms of like the gravity. Who the hell are you? But never quite figured it out. I just know it works, and I, every time I play Bard, I just do it. Okay, so down the waterfall, we're gonna go into easily the trippiest stage in this game. To what I think is pre Kirby Dreamland. This stage is really bizarre, and not just because of the obvious. From a gameplay standpoint, the enemies you fight in this stage don't appear anywhere else in the game. So, nothing else you've encountered in the game up to this point prepares you for what you're going to see here. Or what you're going to duel with here, or battle with here. Most offensive being these stupid saxophones, who when they get loose are a real nuisance. Those notes that they drop can act as an insurance policy, so even if I, like, connected a hit on them, if a note hits me... While I'm descending, then there's a chance I might get comboed. In fact, there's a very good chance I will get comboed. Got a solid snake. These power plant workers we used to be pretty tough, but once I figured out how their health works, it got quite a bit easier. This nuke here was discovered by another runner of this game named Zerus, an amazing runner. We discovered that nuke and made that Bart Devil phase something of a joke. Another JP exclusive, that bowling ball which we'll be using to fight a bowling ball. And I'm just going to take a hit there. Take this. So throw the bowling ball there. Got the two hits I wanted. That's good. Uh, didn't get the hit I wanted there, though. That's unfortunate. Oh, okay, cool. We got it anyway. Not the fastest possible fit in the cycle there, but still good. Keep hitting here. For those that can care about this sort of thing, when you're... When you're attacking this thing while it's transforming, he actually has complete invincibility and it's not hitting him, but I do it anyway just because it helps him maintain rhythm. Still a good fight. Spin around. Let's just shout out to the Simpsons house in the background, floating on a cloud. Nuxie, how you doing? a reasonably length of a cutscene taking us out of this stage. Hey, ready? A quick bonus stage, we get to mash our way through. Didn't really get to talk about the one we saw earlier, because I had to look at the things that have been going on on the tech side of things. However, um, one thing I will advise, um, if you're good at the speed strat known as hovering, for those length of the pass runners out there that know what I'm talking about, you can do, you can have significantly faster times than what I had there. Uh, my co-op partner for this game, Dark Alexander, would get like sevens because he was able to hover, whereas I'm getting like fours and fives. Very useful if you're good at it. Uh, okay, guys. So anyway, this is the last non-full, non-boss stage, as in like the act, the last stage with actual enemies. Channel six on paper is kind of difficult, but we get a hammer right at the start, and that's a pretty big deal, because without this, this stage would actually be insane. Too much going on. Got this big, bad robot. Right, there's a despawn strat I'm going to go for here, and I hope I can get it. I don't think I did, though. Oh, hey, I did. Sweet. So, okay, so if you... I haven't quite figured out the science behind it yet, but I know if you kill those two guys that appear after the robot super fast... Then there's a guy that appears in the top door that would normally appear, and he just doesn't appear. Like, it just it just completely despawns him. It's really useful. Because why not despawn one enemy for free, especially when you're already speedrunning the game? There we go. These ninjas are pretty annoying. They also in no way look like ninjas from another game. No way, no how. Hammer brings them down, but they do have a pretty good move set that they can use to fight us. Particularly, they have this really high angle jump kick 
that can actually beat out anything we jump with, so I can't, like, contend with it, I guess, it with a dive. Anyway, under our boss, don't know how that first hit missed. Got the Shogun looking dude here. Much like anybody previous, he kind of just rolls to the weapons that we use. We really just can't deal with these as long as our timing on these hits is good. Five cycles and down. Pretty reasonable fight. I'm also glad he didn't extend it a cycle. It's only supposed to be a five cycle fight, but there's a random chance that on the 15th hit, three, three hits per cycle, five cycle fight, sometimes on the 15th hit, he'll jump cancel out of getting hit and he extends the fight by another cycle, which is, again, completely random. And it's a, it's a free time loss for the game, which is pretty silly, but if it happens, it happens. It doesn't happen often, but it's happened before. All right, under our last little boss gauntlet here. We'll be fighting the Scrooges that stole Thanksgiving. Uh, did not want that to happen. All right, so with Smithers, there's a pretty specific execution pattern I want to line up here. Like, I want to get those five hits. I want to get him to swing his cape, come back in, swing again, have him do it again, do it again, swing again, do it again. We're going to do this two more times. It's one, it's two, and then we're going to hit him six times here. Whoa, where are you going? That's unfortunate. Ugh. Yeah, I was off by a hit. Strat still works, but... You know. Alright, so Smithers is gonna explode and drop a bunch of food for us, which is nice. We are trying to feed the kids. Bart has the slowest pickup speed for food, so he doesn't get to heal as much as other characters, which is a part of what makes this final boss fight for him a little bit harder than the other three. There is another reason, though. At least for me. Alright, first phase, I'm going to get him to the wall, and then I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. Uh, one more food item, there we go. Feed them. Alright, I hope I get the spacing right. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Burns up against this bookcase, and just keep wailing on him with hits. And I'm hoping my vertical spacing here is correct. Bart has the, from, from my experience, the hardest vertical spacing with which to be able to land this, uh, this infinite here. I drop it with him more than with any other character, at least a second most, but Bart is by far the most the most difficult to land all these hits with. I'm gonna push on and do my best. Alright, last phase. Time will be coming up soon. Alright, looks like we got him roped in. This is good. Gotta maintain my rhythm, don't go too fast, don't go too slow. Also, you can't do this in the U.S. version of the game. <laughs> That's the other reason I don't particularly enjoy playing it. That didn't finish too much fun to do. I'm gonna knock Burns down, and that'll be time. I expected a 16. Last few PBs in this game, when I grinded it last year, Fresh Q2020, were in the 15s, but 16 is still a very respectable run. <sighs> Plus, that was a great Burns fight. I don't normally get Burns fights that good with Bart. I think he ha of the four, he has the hardest final boss. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, Simpsons Arcade. Sure, a lot of you have seen it. Not sure a lot of you have seen everything I was showing off there with it, and I do appreciate the GGs. Thank you. For the rest of you all, um, I think that's, yeah, that's actually going to be my last game of the marathon. So we've got some great stuff coming up next, including Bleed 2, being run by the Fire Splitter. So be sure to stick around and keep on donating so we can feed those kids. Y'all have a good one, and take care.